All right, guys. So I'm still going with this little project here. Um, the first thing I'll say is I hate M42, M48 differences in imaging trains. I'm sure you guys can all relate to this, but it becomes a real pain sometimes. You know, you've got one telescope or you've got one particular setup or off-axis guider or particular connection method that's M42, but then something else has to be M48 and it becomes a bit of a pain sometimes. Anyway, I did think I was gonna have to get an adapter because the way that I had it set up previously with just the bog standard Celestron reducer is um, I was basically able to come off of this um, into a, so this is an M42 off the 36 millimeter wheel that I've got here. I was able to put an M42 to eight adapter on that just with the normal ZWO spacing ring and then connect it to my, um, connect it to my reducer here um, or rather connect it to my off axis guider, sorry. Um, now with, with the way that the spacing works, I had to find a different method. I needed an M42 to M42 um, direct connection method. So as luck would have it, the good thing about the Celestron OAGs is they do provide you with a whole bunch of different adapters for the two sides of the off-axis guider. I think there's about eight different adapters. So with the normal setup, I think I might have explained this already, but with the normal setup, um, basically you connect your reducer directly to the telescope and then this big um, connector here on the telescope side connects directly or screws directly onto your reducer. Now the problem with that, obviously the connector type is different on the, Arizo uh, the Star Arizona. It's a compression type fitting and also the back focus difference. Um, it's about 15 millimeters difference in back focus. So this is not going to be any good anymore for that. So obviously got to find a slightly different way to connect things and get my back focus correct. So let me take this off to start with. We can just see what we've done. Okay, so there you've got, I'll just sort of do my best to try and show this to the camera if I can. Um, so I've basically got the, the reducer here and that's connected onto an M42 connector which goes into the OAG. I think it's just a two and a half millimeter um, Celestron connector here into the OAG. On this side, we've got the 12 and a half millimeter OAG connector with an M42 thread on it. That goes into the 36 millimeter filter wheel, which is then bolted directly onto our 2600. Okay, <laughs> so a bit of a change there. So what I might do is I'll just take off just going to dismantle this to at least show you guys you know how this went together if i can get it apart again here we go so i'm just going to put this down over here for a second all right so you can see here on the oag side um and again this already comes this already comes with the Celestron OAG. So it's just a female um, M42 on there. Um, our reducer went directly into there. So that's nice and easy. Um, I needed to put a two inch compression fitting to the schmidt cassegrain adapter on here. Um, and then if we just have a look over here, Basically, obviously all we're doing then is we're just dropping this into there like that. They are, one thing I like about the Celestron OAGs is they are pretty solid. So once you, once you get them connected up like this, they really do feel well-made and solid. So yeah, now we've got our nice um, backspacing. Now from memory, I know it's supposed to be 90.3 millimeters uh, back focus. I think from memory, I came in at about 91, something like that. But I do know that normally they say with the actual thickness of the filter, um, that adds a little bit more as well in terms of the uh, uh, backspacing. I think it's, it depends on the thickness of the filter, but it's usually about a millimeter. So. I think I'm in the right ballpark to get this, 
you know, that's, that's pretty close. So all that remains now is to get a clear evening, which are like gold at the moment, to actually test this. So let's put that back on. Now it's worth saying here that, of course, when you've got a compression fitting like this, the only thing I guess that could be an issue now is that I could get a little bit of tilt introduced because I've got this um, compression fitting. It's not a bad quality one, but it's always a risk with those kind of um, connectors. So depending on how it goes and what the results are, I may consider one of the Barda click lock fittings, which I know are supposed to be a very high quality compression fitting and very good for when you need when it's really vital that it's centered, whatever you're putting into that compression fitting, which it is in this case. Um, so I'll see how I go with that. I just wanted to show that briefly, just to show you guys or anybody out there that's got a Celestron reducer and maybe what the differences might be in the back focus connection setup. Um, so I think what we um, await for now is a clear sky. Now we may get those one or two hours tonight, I'm really hoping we do, to put this on the mount and give this a little dry run and a test just to see what that star performance is like in the corners. Um, so yeah, stick around and um, we'll get the gear outside and go on to the next, the next test. All right, guys, so I did manage to do a little bit of testing. Uh, we've had, um, we had sort of two sporadically clear nights here where I managed only to get like an hour, an hour and a half. So I thought the best thing to do is just test that for my back spacing. Um, I actually did start off with the 533 camera, but um, now, I've, um, now I've put the 2600 on, which is what I really wanted to test for the, um, you know, for the actual um, APS-C size sensor. So the first thing I'll note is when I was showing my backspacing in the last video, um, for some reason, I'm not sure why, um, probably my brain was away with all the clouds, but I'd missed off the fact that I needed to put at least a good 10 millimeters in front of the OAG here. So basically what I've got here is on the um, telescope side of the OAG, um, you've got a 10 millimeter plus a one millimeter shimmy. So I ended up putting another 11 millimeters in front of that. I just wanted to show that because my backspacing might have seemed strange in the last video. So that was, um, so I soon discovered that, I remeasured it and I realized I'd forgot to put that in front. So that's an M42 connector, which connects directly to the OAG side and then it connects to the actual, screws onto the actual uh, reducer, the Starry Zona reducer as well. So I did those first couple of tests and what I can say is generally, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, in, terms of, in terms of the actual field of view, like out to the edges on this APS-C size um, sensor, definitely the stars are no doubt better than the actual Celestron reducer. They're for sure better. On this size camera, I would have to crop a hell of a lot out from the sides, at least 20, 25% like of my, of my image, like on, on the side. So I had to crop in so much with the Celestron reducer. With this, I know straight away, I'm gonna have to crop in a lot less. Probably still gonna have to do a little bit of cropping. Um, the other thing that I need to bear in mind is I do think that this, this type compression ring here that I've got is having an effect. I think it's introducing a little bit of tilt into a corner, depending on how you tighten it up. So I think something like a Barda click lock is going to be necessary at some point. But yeah, my takeaway is that things are looking good so far. And tonight we've got some clear skies forecast. So what I'm intending to do is get this on the mount and let's go for, um, I think it's NGC uh, 1532. It's a galaxy I've not taken before. It's actually going to be quite small the apparent size of it in this kind of field of view, but that's okay because my main reason is to test, you know, also the, the sort of star stars that we're getting as well out to the corners. So yeah, we will wait for the, um, let's wait now for about 9.30, 10 o'clock, um, this time of year now coming into summer, and um, we'll get this on the mount and we will start doing some imaging and hopefully we'll come out with our first image with the Star Arizona um, 0.63 reducer here. 
and see how we go. So stick with me. We'll get this on. Hopefully we get those clear skies tonight um, and we can do some testing. All right, so I'll see you soon. All right, everyone. So I did manage to get, after being very patient, I managed to get about four and a half hours of imaging time with the new reducer after I'd got the backspacing sorted to about that 90 millimeter mark. And um, here's a, this is actually our stacked, this is a stacked luminance frame. Um, so this is again, this is just to, just to explain, this is the 2600 mm um, APS-C sensor. And um, you know, first glances, I'm, I'm pretty happy. There's, there's definitely a huge improvement. There is no doubt that there is a massive improvement in terms of the stars over the bog standard Celestron reducer. I mean, that's just, that's without question. Now, you know, if you go into the corners, I can see that some of the stars are not perfect. Um, you know, you can see them, you can, you can see them just sort of trailing away slightly into the corners. Um, but the other thing I do need to consider as well at this point is that sort of compression ring fitting that I've got. It's not the best. And I think I am going to invest in a Barda click lock, um, you know, one of the nice Barda click lock compression adapters. Um, that's much better as far as I understand at holding things nice and centered when you've got a compression fitting. So yeah, looking around, you know, I am pretty happy with this. I can definitely see a huge improvement. And it's nice to be able to get, you know, when I do get targets, when it's going to be necessary to, um, you know, when I don't want to be cropping a lot. Of course, in this case, it wouldn't have really mattered if I'd have, you know, if I'd have cropped. In fact, you know, you could argue it would have looked better like that. But um, obviously, I'm wanting to use the entire size of the sensor. So I do think that, I do think for me, this has been a good upgrade. I think if you were using, I think in fairness, if you were just using like a 183 or a 533, some sort of a small size sensor, that's probably a good argument for staying just with the Celestron reducer because it's much cheaper. I know in Australia you can easily pick them up like second hand for about 150 bucks and I think new they're around 200. So it's about double the price for a Star Arizona one and you'll need to get it shipped from the US. Um, so it's about, I think they're around 500-ish. Um, dollars in the US and um, well we can have a look actually and we can actually take a look at uh, some of those specs there as well so here we go so you can see so it's $400 400 US dollars which makes it <laughs> a lot of Australian dollars um, and just a few things to note down here it does give you the focal length that it changes your scope into and in the focal ratio. Um, and if we look at some of the features, there's probably nothing there particularly. It's obviously it's a two inch barrel fitting like we've said. Um, it's threaded for two inch filters. So if you do have the two inch filters, you can just thread those into the end if you want to. Um, it does connect via the M42 thread, how we've already said. Um, multi-coated optics and yeah it's a five element optical design as well which I'm guessing is definitely more than the Celestron one. I couldn't actually find on the Celestron reducer how many elements were but I'd be amazed if it was that many. So yeah that's um, that's pretty much it tells you there at the back focus 90.3 for the largest compatible cameras, this should be kept within plus or minus two millimeter cameras, while smaller format cameras may work fine at larger tolerances. All right, guys, I just wanted to give a quick, um, just something else for reference here. So this is, um, this was actually a Galaxy I took using the Celestron um, reducer. And this is, you know, I just wanted to demonstrate sort of what I was talking about. So I was finding, you know, once you get down sort of to the edges, you really did get this quite exaggerated um, sort of weird stars around the edges. And I've heard about this a lot, you know, it's not like I hadn't heard about this, I'd heard on forums, 
but because I was only using the 533 camera, the smaller sensor, it really wasn't proving to be such a big issue for me. And you can see again in this corner here, these sort of strange star shapes you're getting on the corners. So anyway, I just wanted to provide that just so that you can see, um, yeah, just something as a point of reference there. You can see in the center, there's no real, you know, they're still quite good. Okay, so, look, pretty happy with that. I managed to get about, um, I managed to get about four hours, maybe four and a half hours on this target um, LRGB. So I think that's all I'm gonna do for now. Um, if you feel like liking, subscribing, that's always appreciated. And if you want to see um, any more videos using this or showing this um, reducer being used with my uh, Celestron 925, then of course I'll be putting more of those up on the channel. So I think that's about it for now. I hope that's been useful if any of you guys out there are looking to maybe invest or unsure whether to invest in one of these Starazona reducers. And um, I'll leave you, leave you with the final image. So clear skies to everyone and um, I will see you soon. <laughs>